Hello everybody and welcome back to the Weeb Family Basement. We are the Weeb Family. We're a lot like your family, except for we read manga together and sometimes comic books. And that's why we're here today. Uh, people responded really positively to our American uh, comic book tour. And uh, they said they'd like a little bit of that content, but we don't want to forget about the old followers. So we're going to kind of do a hybrid video here that you were really excited about that we moved it all the way up the wish list uh, for show ideas. And what we're going to do is we're going to discuss not necessarily our top five, but uh, our five uh, American comic book recommendations for manga readers. And before anyone freaks out and starts clicking away, this is not going to be superheroes. You're not going to hear us recommend Batman, Superman, Spider-Man, no X-Men. No X -Men. So this is uh, comic books that American manga readers are likely to enjoy. Uh, so if that sounds good to you, stick around. Um, but before we go any further, I want everyone to know that if they're enjoying this video, I want them to invite the like button over to watch anime and then at the last second, switch it from subtitles to dubs. <laughs> Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And then to make sure to share this on all the social media, including... Y'all need like a rock eyebrow after that. And then to follow us on all the socials. Uh, we're on Instagram. There's links to that below. I haven't put the link to Twitter below, but I haven't been very active there. Like I'm really trying, I'm really trying, but, and Hey, there's exclusive content there actually. Uh, if like you one. like BL, you might like the Twitter threads. Wait, what? Uh, uh, it's kind of sus. I feel like you deserve double rock eyebrow with the, bon with the vine boom sound effect. Uh, anyway, Edit that in, please. well, I put some, I put some deep weeb family lore there. Like, uh, how we like animatronics and the rock of fire explosion. Oh, you posted about that. Yes. Well, I posted that meme I sent you. The which one? The the eighties kids going to Chuck E. Cheese oh, and scaring those. Yeah. Okay. I was talking about your relationship with a uh, handsome Jacob. Oh, handsome Jacob. Whoa, listen, whoa, listen, whoa! Listen. Are you cheating on mom? Just because you're jealous of handsome Jacob doesn't mean you need to start beef. Okay. I just. You just need to not talk about things you don't understand, all right? Dang, sheesh. So. BL, <clears throat> all in the uh, Twitter. Uh, BL, the number one thing uh, straight women like, so it's all good. Um, so you should like our relationship. I, we're going to move on. I shouldn't have brought that up. Yeah, you shouldn't have. You should be ashamed of yourself. But anyway, we're now about to talk about our comic book recommendations. I've told you to do all the things. All so, the things. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, again, this is not a top five list. So mine is organized by size and how it would fit on the table. So are mine. Yeah. So we'll just uh, start with one and we'll alternate back and forth like sure. we usually do. So, so it's in no particular order then? Yes. It's like well, it's I, by size order. It's <laughs> like I literally just said it's in no particular yeah. order in terms of quality. Well, they're all quality. Yes, but yeah. it's in order of size. Yeah. So, size matters. Uh, I said it. Uh, anyway. Anyway. Um, child, anyway, so. Where do you want to start? I just said start with one of yours. I thought you were going to start with this. Oh, no, you said that, and I agree. Because this isn't in our five that we've picked. We this is a, like a universal recommendation. Yes. So... Uh, you know, when you learn English in schools and everything, right? Like I know how to speak English. You, you learn grammar and grammar is like a framework for understanding English and other languages and things like that. Right. So you need to learn the languages, sequential art to enjoy all types of sequential art, whether it's Japanese, American, Korean, French, whatever. And that's why we think this is not part of the list, actually. No. Uh, you really need to read Understanding Comics, uh, The Invisible Art by Scott McCloud of the Clan McCloud. But it's recommended because, like, everybody, 
If you pick up a comic or a manga, it seems like, no, I, I mean, there might be a little bit of confusion when you pick up a manga because it's clearly in the other direction of what you're typically used to reading. But generally speaking, you feel like, oh, I understand what's going on from panel to panel. I know what pictures are. Yeah. I know what words are. They just go together. You understand the surface level. But this really gets into like, when you go from one panel to the next, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. And when you go... When well, one... for example, they talk about you can have action to action transitions where Goku is throwing a punch and one panel is him winding up and the next is another one. Slug him in the face. Yeah, they talk about time transitions where... You know, uh, a character is reminiscing on something and then the next panel is a flashback or a change in scenery and how these techniques can or be they, used. Or they they talk about how you have a panel showing like one mm. scene, but the text doesn't isn't describing. Like you can mm. either have the text describing what you're seeing or you can have the text saying something completely different. And mm. that's going to give you two different storytelling uh, right. techniques. Right. I, I think this is a fantastic book. Um that really deconstructs sequential art. He goes through the history of it. He goes through um, technical definitions of it. And it might seem dry, but he really does it in a... Uh, it's very easy to follow. Oh, and I don't think we made this clear. And not only is this a book, but it's not like a textbook. It's actually a comic yeah. on telling sequence. So when art. he talks about like panel transitions or things, he gives mm -hmm. examples of it. Right. So you know exactly what you're looking at. Yes. And this guy is an accomplished comic book artist. What did he do? Bone or? I don't remember. I forget what he did, but he did uh, like a wildly popular independent book in the 80s. So he does have clout. It's not like this is some random asshole. I'm just going to tell you how to, uh, yeah. what comics are, having never done any myself. Yeah. And we've actually seen this guy lecture in real it life. He's interesting. He's a very entertaining person. So I think that whether you're a manga reader, manhwa reader, American comic book reader, I can't recommend this enough. This is an evergreen. It should be in print. We kind of need to replace ours because you bought it used like mm -hmm. decades ago. Used at a college uh, mm -hmm. textbook store. So like th this is actually used <laughs> in classes, in college right. classes to teach about this kind of thing. Sequential art. That's cool actually. That's actually used yeah. in colleges. But the binding is breaking down and yeah. everything. And we just need to order us a new one ourselves. I need to read this again. Uh, yeah, I need to read good. through it again. I think I've read it twice, but yeah. Okay. So there we go. We've talked about understanding your comic books. Now, why don't you hit us with an actual uh, story recommendation? Well, um, this goes back to when when I was almost exclusively reading X-Men. I was looking for other things, things that were different, that weren't superheroes. So I started picking up issues of something called Blue Monday. So we got Blue Monday. Um, so originally it's all issues and at the time if you didn't have the issue you were out of luck and I didn't even know that you could have found the um, the graphic novels the collections the trades of it at the time um, and it also came out really slowly so it's like you could easily miss stuff mm -hmm. um, so you have the kids are all right absolute beginners someone was super nice one time and gave us another and a, I think this was the original uh, nope. trade of it wasn't nope. it That's no this original. is the original trade well there's the kids are all right it's a different it was, trade of it it was someone gave it to us because they had an extra one or uh, they didn't like it or whatever and it was a newer printing so and this isn't even the whole collection like there's mm. a because it came out sporadically uh, she also because it was done by a China Clugston. China major Clugston well not major anymore oh well <laughs> China i can't i can't keep track of people's personal lives other than um that. but anyways uh she uh, did some like what we would call one shots one shot floppies and they might i think they are in a trade of like hol like a holiday trade where it's like they're all based on different holidays Actually, can, can i interrupt you sure. real quick uh, i can tell you're nervous about recommending this so let's talk about well, first, I'm just telling you what's all there. And then yeah. I think there's another one that I don't have in um, trades, which is Blue Moon, which I think is the last thing that she wrote mm -hmm. on it. And when she's writing it, like each trade will leave you saying, oh, there's, it sounds like there'll be a next one, which is that's the way Blue Moon ended. Mm -hmm. um, but it, I don't think she did oh. another after that. Okay. So uh, 
when it came out. You just keep trying to mansplain me on this. I'm well, I'm not, not trying to mansplain. I'm trying to. I'm trying to help you uh, get the. Now viewer. I'm getting to the story. Okay. Okay. So right. when Why I. Why don't you just explain the story first? I don't know because that's the way I decided not to do it. Um, that's a major. When I started reading this, if you heard people talk about it, they talked about it in the sense of it was like, this is an updated Archie, right? So you, if you know anything about American comics, Archie is a kid from the 50s and he had Veronica and Betty and it was a kind and of... Jughead. And Jughead. And it was just kids hanging out in school. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a back and forth love triangle kind of thing. That's kind of what this is about. You have Blue, who's in high school. Um, blue, clearly, she's, with blue hair. She's the one with blue hair. <laughs> and her friend, Clover. Monday? And I forget the two guys. It's not a love triangle kind of thing. Like, no. both guys aren't in love with her. No, no. The the guy with the green jacket likes He kind of has a thing for blue. But there's no triangle. No. And well, I don't... she kind of has a thing for her teacher, so it's a little... Yeah, like, it's a very angsty story. There's a lot of, mm-hmm. like pop culture references for that time but there's also a lot of pop culture references that are further back because these kids are kind of like unlike Archie they are not the popular kids at their school they're kind of the misfits at their school so they like the weird rock that the other popular kids don't like um I mean I read it thinking that they were kind of cool kids but they were not well they were like you I mean, I guess. Yeah. But, like, there's oh, a lot of music references, pop culture references. A lot of Mod Squad references. Mod Squad. like Blue's really into scooters. She likes scooters. She likes European culture. Yeah. So Speaking of European, her friend is actually Irish. Yeah. And so she goes around saying gob a lot. That's a lot of, like, yeah. slang. For, yeah. Like, British slang. Brit- a lot yeah. of British slang. The Oi Bravs. The Oi Bravs. In it, Bob. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's just... Teenagers being right. dumb teenagers. And what's hilarious is if she ever decided to go back and write these kids again, it's going to be a period piece because it is mm. so solidly in like the, the, the late 90s, early 2000s. Mm. Um, so. When most of our viewers were born. I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but anyways, it's very fun. It's um, if it, it really falls into the uh, shoujo romance category, mm. except... It does have the American twist of like, oh, I can't kiss a boy because I'm not in love with like, no, they get, I wouldn't, they don't get right into like sex or anything, but it's, there's no complications about like family or what's appropriate. There's a lot of just like crude jokes, not crude to the level of prison prison school, school, no, but like crude jokes and kids just Mm. being stupid and trying to peep on blue when she's taking a bath or something that's so, weird but like it's, it's the, the inappropriate humor shit. i feel like that's more accurate to what teenagers like actually do i mean it, it definitely feels more american teenager but not archie like it's funny to say to compare it to archie because archie's so quote-unquote wholesome like is it though yeah there's drinking there's i don't look it's smoking. somewhere it's somewhere in between archie the comic in Riverdale, the TV show. Like, <laughs> I it's guess in you between. could put it that way. Yeah. Uh, and, and I will put this as an endorsement out there. I actually have read all of Blue Monday, and I thought it was an enjoyable time. Yeah. And if I read a slice of life and thought, hey, this is Oh, it's bad. definitely slice of life. Yeah. There's no, like, I think I the think first one, she's trying to go to a concert. Mm-hmm. And this one, it's like weirdness between the boy and the teacher and her, who she has a romantic mm-hmm. crush on. Yeah, you remember way more of this than I do. I forget what, what Blue, I think it's called Blue Moon is the last one, but I forget what that one's about. I just remember her being in a ramen bowl in the image on the cover. So. What? Uh. I believe this is in print. I think you can find the... Or if it's not, I don't think... You should be able to find it on the secondary market. Relatively inexpensive. Whether it's the issues or any of the number of trade paperbacks they put out. Which the issues can be fun because the covers Mm. are all... You know, you have all different covers and there's a lot... They definitely go for the let's do like a surprise Mm. um, artist to do the covers. Yeah. And it's even more like manga because it's uh, black and white on the inside. It is black and white. So you're not, you know, going yes, too so far Yes, so if you do get the issues, zone. the issues are also uh, black and white. To make it white. easier for people trying to look for it, is there like an omnibus version? I don't know. I don't know. I sh- we should have looked We should have looked that. that up, but I did not. So. Well, you can check for it. Yeah, you're that's like, what I do. You're yeah. on the spot. Go, yep. go to Glamazon and uh, type in Blue Monday. But put in Blue Monday comic because then you might just get 
orgy CDs. And I don't mean orgy as in the porno. There's a band called Orgy. Okay. And they did a remake of the... Who did the original? Depeche Mode did. Depeche Mode? Depeche Mode. Like letter D dot Pesh Mode. Okay. And that's how it's spelled. Don't look it up. Don't <laughs> look um, it up. Child. Are uh, you seeing anything? Um, I mean, you can easily get it on Amazon. I don't know if there's an omnibus version. Okay. But, but like, it should be pretty easy to get. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you can buy all three on Amazon, like, together for, like, 30 $7. Yeah, that is a good that's deal. pretty good deal. That's a good deal. And uh, so, and the publisher. And she said all three of them, so I think, I think all of it's there. I think it's all. I, it just said frequently bought together. I don't know. Oh, if okay. Well, whatever. Well, that's... if if the third one is the holiday one, it might be missing the blue moon. One. I don't Anyways, know. I'm sure um, Oni, you can also go to Oni, Oni Press. Press. Yeah. So, so is right. the name of the company. All right. So, my first recommendation, sticking with that uh, slice of life theme. I talked about this on our American comic book tour, and I am going to recommend Blankets. You look like you were going to say something. No, it's just like to talking of Slice of Life. I mean, I, that was probably one of the few Slice of Life's you would definitely recommend to people. Yes. This is fantastic. I haven't read this in about a decade, so I don't remember the names of the people. Uh, I think it's semi-autobiographical. Yeah. So I think the main character is uh, Craig. Craig, which is Craig Thompson is the uh, author of this. But basically it's about he grows up in the Rust Belt. I forget if it's Michigan, Wisconsin, something like that. Very secluded town. Yeah. Um, not that it is, like it's a very religious family. I would say conservative, but I don't mean... I don't mean like Reagan conservative or anything like that. It's I just more, mean religious. And I don't even know that they're conservative. devout conservative. It's more like this is what it's expected of us conservative. Right. And so um, it kind of shows some incidents from his childhood. But the bulk of the story takes place when him and his brother go off to like a church camp or a winter camp, something like that. And he meets a girl. I want to say her name was... I don't remember. Raina? Or something like that. She had like a weird... Uh, it was spelled awkward. Yeah. It was a weird um, name, but uh, like a hippie name. That's what I was a trying to think. A little yeah. yeah. But it's about the two of them uh, falling in love, first love kind of thing, um, in the backdrop of coming of age, in the backdrop of, bro, you're only in winter camp for like two weeks. Like, well, not just that. You, because what kind of relationship are you gonna have? Because here? he's in a family that is mm. expecting certain things from the kids. So, like, as a contrast, mm. these kids are the wild American kids, yes. right? This is the conservative. The parents expect you to not mm. date, mm. not go out, not you don't smoke, you don't drink, you don't mm. you, you do what your parents say, even if your parents are kind of like not the nicest to you. Mm. Um, so he runs into a lot of guilt over having feel, first love feelings for a girl. And there's also like a, in the background, there's a subplot of uh, him and his brother growing up together, which uh, even though I have a sister, we didn't grow up together. So it's not something that, you know, resonates with me fully, but <clears throat> it is something that happens in there. And I want to say him and his brother come to a reconciliation, but it's not so much that they were estranged. It was just, they kind of grew apart. They grew apart in their teenage years. And it was more of uh let's come back together and remember those good times. You know, uh, again, it's like I said, slice of life. This should be definitely should be in print. It's by uh top shelf publishing, um, I, usually, I see this it's, everywhere. It's all, I mean, it yeah. might all, you can find it at Barnes and Noble. Yeah, it's yeah. not always there in Barnes and Noble, but if you look enough, it'll end up showing up there. And this yeah. printing, which is an older printing, might be a first printing, uh, has the nice French folds. The binding is still yet. Yeah, look how white those pages are. It's a, it's a good printing. Yeah. It's a good um, printing. But they, I think they have hard covers. They even have some different covers. Like, there's a lot of choices when it comes to that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think... I just think it's brilliant. It I, is I also one say. that is in black and white. Yes. So again, you're not traveling too far out of your comfort zone. Uh, the art is a little indie style. So it might, 
Not that blue is manga, but you can see a strong. There's a Eastern manga influence, influence yeah. in it, but this it, is not. This no. is totally American mm-hmm. independent, yeah. uh, stylized kind of thing. Um, I would say I'm trying to think of a good comparison to this in manga. Like I think that for Blue Monday, if you like Azamanga Dayo or that's a little too wholesome, but well, whatever. I'm just talking about the slice of life kids being angsty. Yeah. Maybe a little bit of Kari Kano. I would think more Horamiya is probably. Okay, Horamiya. So if you enjoy that, that would be my latest. I'm trying to think about what would you, what manga would you like, and you would probably like this. <sighs> Give me a second. Um, no, okay. Not exactly the same, because mm-hmm. again, I, I feel like romance in Japanese stuff tends to go a little more wholesome. Sure. But maybe a, a sign of affection. Because yeah, um, it's for while well, sign affection, they're in college. It is a first love. It's very serious. It's not. It's for sign of affection. It's a very serious story. It's not cutesy first love in high school. Um, so I feel like the level of maturity in a sign of affection may be a little higher. But I feel like how they're viewing love might be a little mm-hmm. similar, even though. In Sign of Affection, while it's not finished, it does feel like the two might end up together. Mm-hmm. This doesn't, because it's a first yeah, love. Don't, don't do spoilers. But I'm just saying, like, a high school love doesn't have the same mm-hmm. long-lasting feeling that, say, a, a, a romance that is in, say, college, college would have. Sure. Um, I would also say, if you like uh, a silent voice, there's obviously not as much bullying in this. But I'm just saying, like, it's those coming-of-age, serious coming-of-age well, stories that if you like those manga, you'll probably There's like family trauma in this, yeah. which I think mm-hmm. might be reflected in um, A Silent Voice. Sure. So, anyway, moving on. Moving on. So, here we have, I uh, think... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Do we need to blur this out? This is banned in Tennessee. If you are a Tennessean and you're watching this... Uh, hashtag not legal advice. You put, should put your hands over your eyes. Put your hands over your eyes. Yeah, I live in Tennessee. Or, just put one here. one hand over your eyes and cover your ears. Wait, wait, put a timestamp for this so that the people who live in Tennessee can yeah. just get this far. <laughs> timestamps. Right. We'll give you timestamps. I'll give you timestamps. If you're from Tennessee, you cannot watch from here. <laughs> we will not be held legally liable for Tennesseans. For giving you illegal this. material. Yes. So, so we have um, Art Spiegelman's Mouse. Yep. Um, it is story of his father's um time in auschwitz Mm -hmm. um yes it's a holocaust it's a holocaust survivor story um it's hard to know where to start with this well Um, you start in the right place it's 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 a bio it's a biography of art spiegelman's dad who was a holocaust survivor yeah and the thing that makes it different and and i think really actually makes it relatable on a lot of different levels is that instead of drawing them as people, he draws the Jewish people as mice. Mm -hmm. He draws the German people as cats. He draws the Polish people as pigs. He draws the American people as dogs. Mm -hmm. Um, He, he makes it, he takes these very serious uh, subject matter and somehow makes it relatable in these little cartoon figures. And that doesn't mean, because they're cartoon figures, it doesn't mean that it's cutesy like Mickey Mouse. Mm. It's not like Mickey Mouse in any way. No, not at all. It is very serious. It, does, it, it doesn't It does shy away from any of the shocking things that you might think would be in a story about the Holocaust. Um, it shows uh, killings. It shows rape. It not, shows... Not just killings, like killings of baby, like literal... Yeah. Killing it shows and stuff like starving that, yeah. people to death. It mm-hmm. show, I mean, anything that you can think of that that you've heard about that happened, it is in this book. Yeah. Well, in ours, it's a two volume book, but you can yes. get it in. I, I mean, think it's still you can get tri- it as an omnibus. Yeah. Like yeah. I see it at the bookstore all the time. No, I know. Well, there's many different options for getting it. Mm-hmm. You can get it as an all in one. I think there's an all in one hardcover, which I mm-hmm. want to get. You can also just get a box set with two of them. Uh, who publishes this? This would be. Pantheon. Okay. I'm not that familiar with no. them, but this is super evergreen. Yeah, you'll find it. Unless you live in Tennessee. Unless, Unless you live in Tennessee. You're um, going to have to get a Colombian smuggler to fly <laughs> it in for you. Again, this is also a black and white 
mm -hmm. uh, comic. I look. I always ask you this. I always encourage daughter to read a lot of our stuff. When did I have you suggest for you to read this? Uh, I was in like. Were you six? I was in like third or fourth grade. So she was super young when I recommended it to her. Yeah. Um, emotional damage. <laughs> well, You're not it, saying it right. What it, what I it, say it correctly. Since you were so young when you read it, and that seems to be the fear across the country of small people and reading just in this. Tennessee. Just in Tennessee. What What were your feelings on it I when mean, you read it? I thought it was a pretty good, like, I guess depiction of what it was like for people in World War II. Like, okay, I've read a couple other books that are, like, set of, like, people in world war ii i don't know how like which ones are fictional and which ones are non-fiction because they're all like stuff i've read for school and i don't really remember all that much out of that one because i read it so long ago i mean i remember it but like i don't remember it that well mm -hmm. but i feel like i mean i wasn't like traumatized by it or anything i thought it was pretty good i like telling the story considering it was a story of like an actual person and you didn't feel scared after you read it I don't remember. Probably not. Considering probably just I don't remember. Just probably just depressed. <laughs> probably not, considering I don't remember. Yeah. So, but this, like blankets, like um, understanding comics. I feel like if you like sequential art, it should be in your collection. Mm -hmm. Just as a. Also, it's just good if you like history stuff. Anyways. Well, I mean, it, it's very yes, it's a very his. Because it's not historical fiction, because it's, you don't see a lot of biographies in sequential art. So that, it, that will make it, if anything, a conversational piece if you want to talk about it that way. That it's, it's, unique that way. it's unique in that sense. I can't think of many biographies that are sequential art. March is the only one. That Mar yeah, March of. is the only one that I can think of. I mean, I'm sure more exist. That's just the only ones I can think of off the top of my head. But. Like March, that's a political one. Well, I wouldn't say this is necessarily political. It can fall into that political category. Well, it's category. political that's not charged, you know, because yeah. uh, most people agree that, and I say most, oh, no. that Nazis were bad. Yeah. Which is the official opinion of this channel. Yes. I just want to state it. So if, if we're not clear, Nazis are bad. Nazis Don't are bad. Don't support Nazis. Yeah. Um, and yes, the Nazis are portrayed as bad in this book. It's there. There's no. There's no gray area. The Nazis nope. are bad. Um, but there is some gray area in what other figures do. Like mm. there's gray areas in what some of the Jewish people do, in what some of the Polish people do. Yeah, because they don't. If I remember correctly, there's some Poles that are heavily working with the Germans, and it's all about yeah, some like. Yeah, kind of rude too. And I believe there were some collaborators even on the Jewish side, but like, it's a story that's not shying away from. Uh, this is a harsh situation, and people are doing what they can to survive. There's e even even his grandfather does a lot of things he wouldn't normally do, and it's all just about surviving, get mm. to the next day. And because just like in what prison school said. You can't grab asses if you're dead. Um, child. I don't know that that relates to this. Um, anyways, <laughs> so while we're saying this, this is a biography, it is also a bit of therapy, obviously, mm. for Art as he writes this, mm. because he's also using this to opportunity. Art the creator. Art not, the creator. Yeah. Um, to speak to his father about mm. his father's experience right. there and his mother mm. who committed suicide. Yeah, she uh, um, unalives herself. She you're dies not. You're not. Movie. You're not. Yeah, you're not she, allowed well, to the thing say that, the S word on YouTube. You're well, supposed to say unalive or in a video game. No, I mean, that's only on TikTok. TikTok is the uh, one that'll actually take your stuff down if you okay. say anyway, stuff. So, part of it is not just relating to his father. Mm -hmm. He wants to understand how his mother could survive Auschwitz and then come to America, have him, and live with his father, and then commit suicide. So that's also part of the story, to try and understand mm -hmm. who his parents were, what they went through, and share that with everyone else. It's brilliant. Out of all the yeah. things that we're recommending, this one might be objectively the best. Yeah. Storytelling-wise. I mean, wise. yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah. Because no, it's, well, so, it's, it's also so fluid. You're, I don't know. Yeah, that's it's true. good. I, I want to keep this focused on the manga audience that we're trying to convince to read this stuff. Mm. I think 
if you like any of the historical stuff, whether it's Rose of Versailles, uh, Requiem of the Rose King. Even though they are fiction and not right. biography. I think, you know, you like Vinland Saga, you sure. like, um, I don't know, what other historical things am I always reading? Um, a Bride Story. Thermae Romain. Thermae no, Romain. But you know, any time, any time, if you are in his, into like, you like historical mangas, style, yeah. while this one is not historical fiction, mm. um, it's still Hist yes. history and it's still... And, and you know what? I'm going to go out on them. I know that subject wise they are completely different but art wise similar is b stars maybe if you like b stars <laughs> you like the anthropomorphic maybe give I it a try mean, yeah. the, the anthropomorphization makes a little more sense than or, in or, Beastars, if, or if but... you like or if you like good night poon poon you might like it well because the well, whole part is yeah he's the, being portrayed as something that he's not the poon visually. poon character is a person yeah but to take some of the edge off the depression yeah. They draw him as like this little birdie figure. Yeah. And that's kind of, well, Art even explicitly says it in the book that. He understands that the subject matter is so heavy, he needs right. it, needed a way to connect with the people. Mm. So, yeah. yeah. Got to add a little morphine to the mix. Too, <laughs> Morbid <right>? time? <laughs> no, not that kind. Mor <laughs> Morbid time? <laughs> they just, I don't know. Morphine. Morphine. Morbid. Morbid. No. Morbid. Anyway. <clears throat> um, um. Um, anyway, hmm. my next recommendation is Why the Last Man by Brian K. Vaughn. That's now, a on his shoulder. now, hold on. Before I discuss this book, hmm. because this is Brian K. Vaughn, like, commenters, just to stop right now. I know you're already furiously typing, why isn't Saga on this list? We have not read Saga and here's why. When it was popping off about 10 years ago. Uh, 10 years ago. Roughly 10 years ago. Like, uh, there was something about it. I forget what it was. There was also, some you were big... just poor or the back then. No, I mean, I could have afforded Saga. But like, uh, or the issues. Because it was popping off right when it first came out. We were more distracted at the time. Maybe. You were like a bb so we you took up a lot busy. of our time yes. a lot of our time a lot of a lot of feeding and poopy diaper changes but uh and you probably be up on a couch yeah. when you're supposed to be holding me while you're taking care of me no i worked smarter not harder <laughs> anyway um i remember it was popping off and something came out about it if i remember correctly it was something about a titty on the cover or something like that and people what? being Fucking it's the, offended. It's the, it's the cover that you keep seeing in the comic oh, in, sure. in the bookstores the, the with the breastfeeding of the baby. And like I felt like it was so stupid. I felt Brian K. Vaughn put it on the cover just to, to get through just to be what, get a reaction. What is wrong with showing a lady breastfeeding her child? The whole there's point is there's wrong nothing with wrong okay. with it, but sometimes when people do things it feels like I'm doing it to get attention. Yes. I see. Like the Nirvana cover. Well, no, that was a bad example. Um <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to think. Like when you back back in the early teens, like American comic book writers would make characters gay, just to buzz up uh, excitement and get people to buy the the stuff. Like that one time when they made that one X Men character gay. Yeah, like North Star gay or Shatterstar gay. I'm not All gonna the comment gay. on any of these things. <laughs> Look, and I'm not saying they can't have gay characters, but like at that time, it was done for shock value and to drive sales so when i heard this controversy on saga i just wrote it off as some people are trying to be some shock jocks and i, I did feel like there's a I little bit of that and i didn't want to buy into it now i've heard saga is really good people even talked about it on our last thing and maybe one day i'll read it which is fine uh and all that but it's don't bring up saga saying. i feel like anytime american comics come up around me everyone's asking me about saga and I could give two shits right now. But the book you should give two shits about is Why the Last Man. That was a long detour. Yeah, it was. That, yeah. That, welcome to our channel. Welcome to our channel. <laughs> we don't have lo-fi in the background. We don't have quick edits. We don't have the ones where if you're going, uh, the camera leans closer and closer to you. We don't do any of that stuff. And we have tangents. That's what we do. Anyway, I'm pretty sure this is by uh, Sagas by Brian K. Vaughn. Uh, but this is one of the Which first... Which would be th hilarious if it wasn't. Yeah, why don't you fact check that for me? By who? 
uh, just do saga author and see what comes up. Saga comic author. So yeah, saga, saga comic author. Uh, but anyway, Why the Last Man is about uh, this uh, guy named Yorick, and he has a. Uh, uh, the two credits of the saga are Brian K. Vaughn. Yeah, and then Fiona okay. Staples. Yeah, so I am correct. Um, it's about York, this guy, and his little monkey right there. His capuchin monkey, I believe. Yeah. And like that. one day, all of a sudden, every dude on the planet dies except for him and his monkey. <laughs> That's him and his monkey. Yep. And so uh, I forget what he named the monkey. Or maybe the monkey's name is York. And no, I'm pretty sure his, his name, name was York. I'm pretty yeah. sure his name is York. Uh, and maybe if it was on the back, I, I could read it. But anyway. Um, and it's just them surviving in this post-apocalyptic world where... All women. That's all women. Half the uh, population is dying. And it's not just humans. It's like all animals. All, yeah. All male uh, genders... Are gone. Are gone. Or sexes, I should say. Um, with all the animals and everything. And then it's just about him, like, going around in disguise because... All the women either want to, like, kill him for reasons or they want to mate with him, but not, like, in a uh, sexy harem manga well, sort of way. Well, his main goal is to get to his girlfriend, who's yeah, on the yes, other side of the true. country. Yeah. So, it's not him just hiding in his, you know, yeah. apartment trying to get away from ladies. No, his whole goal is to get across, like, go from New York to California to get to his girlfriend. Mm, something like that. Again, it's been about a decade yeah, since I've read I, I just know he has to go across country or but really it, far it, distance to it, get to his girlfriend. I know we probably look stupid and we probably should have researched it a little bit. But, like, yeah, he is trying to get to his girlfriend. And it's all about the crazy stuff that happens uh, along Doesn't the way. Doesn't he run into his mother at one point and has probably. a big old conversation with her? Yeah. I can't remember. And his sister? I don't remember. It's been about a decade. Yeah. Plus, I don't want to do spoilers. Well, so. he does end up traveling with a specific woman who helps him get where he needs to go. Yeah. So anyway, uh, I think this is a great read. I think if you like, obviously, if you like, um, uh, what's that? World's End Harem. World's End Harem. You probably want to read this. This is the original source material for World's End Harem. It's, oh, a, whole, a guy, mm -hmm. the only guy on the planet, but he's not having sex with every woman that he sees. We got to turn that into a manga and make yes. it so that he has sex with every woman that he sees. So if you like that, you'll like this. If you like... I think if you like a lot of mystery stuff like uh, Naoki or Asawa, I think you would uh, like something like this. Um, just any kind of uh, any kind of mystery sci-fi seinen, I think that uh, you would enjoy. And uh, this one's in color. Our first book that's in color. So, and this is by Vertigo Comics, which is an imprint of DC. So this brushes a little bit up against the superheroes, but. This is only 10 uh, graphic novels, so maybe like four or five manga worth. That's so pretty short. It, it's a pretty short read, I think. So anyway, that's Why the Last Man. Okay. Our next few here are Vertigo, are Vertigo comics. Mm. Oh, okay. Yep. Um, so what I have is Fables. Mm -hmm. um, I got this purely in issue form, um, but it is available in graphic novels, and you can get them all. They're DC. Um, uh, Fables is about what if uh, fairy tale character people were real. Now, it's not real in the sense like, oh, we're back in time, and this is Snow White, and they live in it. It's fairy tales live in an, another world, another dimension, but something happened in their world that chased them all out of their world and into our world. So they're all living in our world, uh, trying to set up essentially like, I guess, refugees that come across from the fable world into the real world. Um, but they also will go back try to see what's going on yeah, there kind of like season two of legend of Korra, like where the spirits were coming to i mean i guess kind of back it's a mighty of some manga but i can't remember what it is but um on the tip of my tongue. most of the human fables they've set up uh an area in new york they live they have like a block of buildings that they kind of all live in they have shops they have you know they live their normal lives mm -hmm. 
But of course, in fables, you have tons of fables who are not human passing. So they have what's called the farm, and that's like in upstate New York where they send all of these like horses or pigs or mice or whatever, and they go live up there. They go live on um, animal farm. <laughs> Yo, 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 yo. But the main characters in this story are Snow White and the Big Bad Wolf. But the Big Bad Wolf can look like a man, so... Yeah, look like a man. He's he's kind of like a, a detective noir in this story mm. because they don't know what the evil is that pushed them out of their world. So part of... You get a lot of, like, short story arcs throughout the series, but the main, once you get to the end, is fighting the evil that pushed them out of their fable world and all this kind of stuff. Um, if you like, I'm trying to think of manga. Well, if you like Shrek, which is not a manga. Which but. is not a manga. <laughs> so yeah, it's very... And also not a manga, but Lore Olympus. Lore Olympus. Anything, if you like anything that's um, mythology, mm. uh, f f fables... Um, maybe fairy if you tales. like Inuyasha, maybe. Maybe if you like Inuyasha. Or if you're just an Izakai fan. Yeah, it definitely has that Izakai feel because you're the, going from world to world. Yeah, it doesn't have the um, video game aspect. Not there, at all. No video no. game aspect at all. The video game aspect um, in Izakai is kind of cringe. Though. If you yeah. like um, Snow White with the red hair, you might like it. Um, mm -hmm. The thing about this is it is relatively long. I didn't look up how many graphic novels there are, but there are... Well, it's over 100 issues. At least over 100 and issues. And they tend to put six per graphic novel. So you could be looking at, I don't know, anywhere from 15 to 20 graphic novels, depending on how thick how they thick make they them. How thick they are. Yeah. Um, to I go, feel like if it's that long, they'd put more than six in them. I mean, maybe. I don't know. To go along... I would say to go along with it, they did do a limited series called Cinderella. Cinderella in that story is their um, undercover agent, so that's kind of interesting. And, and then wasn't there's there a Jack miniseries. I think there's also a Jack miniseries. I can't remember if I got that one or not. I don't think I did. Um, and because th um, the interesting part about Jack though is. Every time you hear of a Jack in a fable, it's mm -hmm. the same Jack. Right. And they do that with a lot of the characters. They're like, oh, if you've heard a fable about something, it's the same character and they're doing all the same things. And there's definitely an aspect of the more well-known a story is in our world, like, so say Snow White, that means Snow White, if someone tried to kill her, it's has a bit of... She has a, she's harder to kill. She has a bit of plot armor against mm -hmm. her of like death is harder but if you're like a not a very well-known fable you can definitely die you can be killed by who the bad people are which what's interesting is figuring out <coughs> which fables are the bad guys and which ones aren't because it's not necessarily who you would expect who the bad guys are which is kind of fun um there's also a actual novel that was written to go along with it but it it takes place in the fable world with different characters. So there's a lot of extra stuff to go with it. You don't have to get it all. I think fables itself is definitely, you don't need all those side uh, things unless you really end up liking it and wanting to find it all. Um, I found it very enjoyable. <laughs> those noises. You I think they, they even... I had a cough and then like for some reason when I like yawn, it like, it makes like this frog sound. I don't know. Anyway. They even end up bringing in more what you would call recent fables because I believe they even bring in like the Wizard of Oz characters at some point to be actual mm -hmm. people. So it just, it depends on, you know, but I liked it a lot. So. All right. Now let's get to the spicy. <sighs> Gotta recommend Preacher by Garth Ennis. Garth Ennis is my favorite uh, American creator of all times. So we had to have some representation here. The rep. Yep. Uh, Preacher is about a guy who is inhabited by a half-demon, half-angel entity that they call Genesis. And it gives him the power of God, or the word of God, I should say. Um, and what that means is, if he uses his special voice, whatever he says, he's like Purple Man from X-Men, like or from Marvel. Like, you got to just do what he says. He, you're compelled to do it. You physically cannot stop yourself from doing it. And uh, the guy who gets this is actually a disgrace, like, Baptist preacher and whatnot. And so 
he meets up with his ex-girlfriend, who is now like a hitman for the mob, and I swear to God, an Irish vampire. Like, that's the three people that are going around the country, and what they're doing is, they're literally trying to find God. Like, God is so pissed off about this Genesis creature that he's left heaven, he's left humanity to do their thing, and he's just GTFOing. And what Jesse, the preacher, wants to do is go confront him and tell him to get his ass back up on the throne and, like, uh, govern humanity again. And, like, as I sit here and say this, I know it sounds, like, really bad, but it's executed so well. I could only read so one well. volume. I couldn't do anymore. It's it's executed So, Mommy, you don't think it's good? No, I Mommy hates like it. I like it. So, first of all... But Garth Ennis is an acquired taste. You can't just jump no, into I, Garth I don't, Ennis. I don't think that's true at all. First of all, first of all, <laughs> first of all, if shoujo is mainly your thing, these cutesy slice of life things, this is not for you. This then is who's it for? Who's it for? This is for your very hardcore seinen readers. If you like... Berserk, Blade of the Immortal. Um, I, I don't know. I'm trying to think of some it more. It goes beyond. Interesting... Like I don't know. It's beyond those, if you ask me. No, like, it's not. I don't think it's definitely not beyond Berserk. I don't know. Maybe because it's in color, it has a whole different feel as you're reading it. I don't it know. It could be. But there's also more dark humor to it. Uh, I'm trying to think of some. I guess that has things a lot that I don't comedy. find funny. Yeah, well, that that's true. Yeah, so. I think this is so good. It's in my top five American comics. I have comics so many people time. tell me to read this. I read the first volume and I'm just like, yeah. I can't. But read don't more. watch the AMC show. The AMC show sucks. It's it's non canonical. Why is it bad? Why is it bad? I don't have time. We would have to do a whole other video on that. <laughs> Let's just put it this way. I do it's understand it's nothing really like the yeah. comic. So preacher, I think there's only like ten uh, trades of this, and in all the trades, you're gonna get all the side stuff. Like there were a couple of. Uh, there was like a, a Saint of Killers uh, miniseries and a uh, Good Old Boys one where it talks about Jesse's like family. But they include all that in the right chronological order. So it's a very good uh, series printing and it's evergreen. I, I recommend everyone that everyone that's into hardcore Saint and get this. But not if you're into shoujo and stuff like that. No, you stay... 50 feet away at all times from this. Now let's cleanse our palate with some yeah. shoujo. Some shoujo adjacent uh, American comics. All right. So if you're close to our age, mm -hmm. you're going to feel some nostalgia for this. This is Gem in the Holograms. Truly outrageous. Truly, truly outrageous. So when this came out, I was like, I definitely have to get this. Because it looks awesome. Because it's Gem in the Holograms. And oh, look, I always at that, look at that hollow foil. There is a hollow foil Dad, to the cover. That, right? I love the hollow foil. There's actually quite a few of the covers that have hollow foil. I on wish it. I could have hollow foil clothing. They, <laughs> they, I believe they did collections. Like I think it's two mm -hmm. volumes. Of collecting trades the whole, or Of trades to yeah. collect the whole thing. Um, now, there was a little pushback when this comic came out because the girls don't look like the cartoon they don't look like uh not barbie yeah they don't look like well the only barbie. one that looks like barbie is jim mm. because she's tall she's busty no I, I know jim was meant to sell action figure or sorry dolls dolls um but they like didn't sell that many though right? but it was by or no mattel does barbie and hasbro does i believe so Okay, so this was Hasbro's Barbie. Kind of, yeah. Yes, and they had to have the cartoon to sell it. And they did. that's how you sold things. When Jem came out or the, the mm. noise about Jem coming out happened, that's when mm. they did Barbie, rock and roll Barbie or whatever. Yeah, whatever. Anyways, anyway. so this definitely comes from someone who, like Cobra Kai, loved the original content and was like, mm -hmm. I'm going to create... You know, Actually, I can, rather than Cobra Kai, I compare it more to the more recent cartoon of Voltron. It was somebody who was like, look, when you go back and watch Voltron, that is not the best cartoon well, in the well, world. What is the quote that they said? Is we were trying to make the Voltron you remember, not the Voltron that actually existed. Mm -hmm. And I feel yeah. like this gem in the holograms is kind of like that. It's not, 
it's the gem you remember rather than the gem that actually was. Mm -hmm. And so you have these girls, um, they, it's the same concept. They're orphans, but also sisters and they run their own orphanage. This, you know, you have the Starlight Foundation. They decide to form a band. Jerrick is the singer, but she's, uh, very shy, doesn't want to go up on stage. So she creates the hologram so that she can sing for everyone. Then you have the misfits who are like, oh my gosh, what's this new band? They're not going to take us over. So there's the rivalry between the misfits and Jem. And obviously there's the whole secret of, is anybody going to find out who Jem actually is? Um, but the bit of the controversies that, are, that, that surrounded it when it first came out was that because the girls look different, a people, a lot of people were in the whole "not my, not my gym." Yeah. Yeah. So each of the girls, when you look at them individually, their silhouettes are all different. You could pick them out by their silhouette. Like they aren't the cookie cutter. They all look like Barbie. One's more hippie. One's more busty. One's more skinny. They're all very different. But more than that, I think a lot of people are like, "Oh, well, I guess that's kind of interesting. We're gonna have you know some body inclusion and all this kind of stuff." But the bigger the bigger thing that a lot of people didn't like, which I was like, okay, whatever, is they had Kimber, which is Jerrica's actual biological sister. Uh, she's gay, and she forms a relationship with one of the misfits, Stormer. I think what people don't understand is way back in like 2015 or 2012, 2012, 2015, when this came out, it was still not cool. I mean... Like all those... Five years ago, it was still not acceptable to be gay, like <laughs> I mean, in pop. It's in American comics pop. Culture. I mean, yeah. it was very. And to add on top of that, as the story went on, they added a brand new character that was not in the cartoon, um, Blaze, and she is transgender. So this has a lot in it that some people were just like, "Not my gem," but I was like, "I'm gonna read it," and I did, and it's good, and it has. Basically, I think the goal of, I think it's Thompson was the author, um, her goal was, I want every kind of girl that you can think of to be in this book, right? Because a lot of the times when girls are in stories, it's like you have one type of girl, and if another girl shows up, she's just kind of slightly different, or she's the friend, and she has the freckles, and I guess she's you, you the get ugly the, one. the black friend. Or, or the black friend. Mm -hmm. And it's like, no, like, there are so many different kinds of women. We're going to put as many as we can think of in this book so that you can, I, I guess representation is the word you want to use. We're going to have just so many different kinds of girls in here to say, we're not one thing. We're different. We're, we're, mm -hmm. we're not just the doe-eyed girl who needs rescuing or the badass girl who's going to save the, the day. This is the book that attempted to completely smash the feminist test. <laughs> What's the feminist test? I always forget the name of it because it doesn't matter. The Bechdel test? Yeah, the Bechdel, the, the doesn't That's matter test. That's just for movies. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, um, so I think, I mean, it's a good story. It's, it's gem, mm. but it's also not gem. So if you absolutely were in love with the cartoon and cannot stand to have any representation of it other than what it was in that cartoon, then you will hate this. But if you're like, I like Jem, I like mm -hmm. interpretations of Jem, this is we really good. What well, manga would it be similar yes, to if exactly. you're not Jem? Oh, um, if you like any of the pop idol stories. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. The yeah. idol manga is like Idol Dream or uh, what was it? Carol and Tuesday, maybe. Yeah, so anytime we... Uh, the one that I had, the full moon. Yeah, Full Moon uh, Saga mm. Shida. Yeah. Which there, yeah. So there are a lot of idol stories yeah. in uh, manga. So if you, if those are your your jam, if you like Yuri, there is mm. the the love the Yuri aspect. Um, the love story, and each of the girls have their own romances and stuff too. So if you just like romance in that direction, that there's lots of romance in it too. So. Mm. And you yeah. said there are trades available. There are trades available. IDW, which is who publishes mm -hmm. this, they're really good at keeping things available so yeah i would not anticipate you having problems but and I, I think didn't, i didn't research every single one of these the so. other thing that idw is really good at is making different covers for each issue so if you're into that they've tons got of a, tons options. of different options yeah. for getting different issues and different covers and all this mm -hmm. kind of stuff um i just went with the number one standard cover to show off so yeah. that's probably the one you're going to see the most probably well they they do a lot of 50 50 split variants yeah. so you're 
statistically equally likely to encounter mm. the different covers. <clears throat> All right, so going back to vertical, which I didn't realize we had so much vertical comics representation. Well, okay, when you... Vertigo. Vertigo. Vertigo, sorry. But the, okay, so because the deal is, at the time, there wasn't a lot of choice. There true. was DC, and then there was Marvel, and most of that was superheroes. And if you wanted something that was other than superheroes, Vertigo was an option. Mm -hmm. They Their specific imprint, which I don't even think they're around anymore, I think DC stopped. Oh, I'm pretty sure they're still around. Well, whatever. I think they stopped doing Vertigo itself. I think they still publish, but not under Vertigo. Okay. But anyways... Um, that was where you went. When you wanted something other than superheroes, typically darker, um, typically mm -hmm. not like you're lighthearted, all these kinds of things, you went to Vertigo to find something other than superheroes. Mm -hmm. Reasonable. So anyway, uh, I think a lot of people will be familiar with the movie, but not the comic book. So I'm going to recommend V for Vendetta by... A little fuzzy there. By Alan Moore. Um, and David Lloyd on art. Lloyd? David Lloyd. Lloyd? Lloyd. 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 Yeah. Lloyd. Because there's two L's there. Uh, okay, so uh, if you're not familiar with the movie, uh, which does not follow the comic book strictly, so there is value in doing both, um, this is about our guy on the cover uh, who simply calls himself V. He basically was the... Uh, unfortunate victim of government conspiracy and uh, medical experimentation and he's out for revenge in this super dystopian fascist uh britain uk government yeah it's in the uk um though america just basically doesn't exist in this world aren't they in like a nuclear war with themselves they have like a pandemic and then a nuclear war so with themselves, oh, with themselves. Yeah, with themselves. Wait, wait, wait. so we had a the u.s had a civil nuclear war yeah. whoa, whoa wait, wait, wait. a pandemic yeah. is that be from a dead irl <sighs> i don't know a lot of people said that when <laughs> when it was yeah it, so it pandemic out. then uh, what's nuclear next war. nuclear civil yeah. war yeah. so i mean Anyway, it takes place. It takes place in a time of uh, social unrest in the UK, but the UK is able to come out of the world conflict by uh, installing a fascist dictatorship and this sort of thing. We did the medical experiments on our main character, and now he's out for revenge. And honestly, there's a lot of uh, anarcho agit prop in this book. Um, v is trying to topple the government in his revenge plot. And there's a girl named Evie uh, who's kind of caught up with Evie. him in this. <laughs> well, I think it's short for Evelyn. But like... I, just, my first there's I a always lot thought of, it was Evie or Evie. Well, whatever. Yeah. There's a lot of V puns in this. Like, v. Yes. Violet. Exactly. So anyway... A lot of V words over and over. Can I continue? <laughs> Can you? So anyway, uh, it's, a, it's a very great dystopian, uh, anti-fascist type uh, story with lots of action and some mystery in there. It's an absolute classic, in my opinion, by one of the greatest writers out there, which yeah, I Yeah, the ending disagree. is slightly different than the movie, if you've the seen it. The ending is different than yeah. the movie. So again, there's value into both. Yeah. Um, I believe that, again, if you're a mystery seinen... Uh, type of if you if you like stuff like uh, I'm trying to think what well historical stuff too because it's sure. even though it's it's not history but it's more like a what if history maybe I think if you like 20th century boys Pluto um, I know they're not a hundred percent accurate well like okay so but... Pluto is the future but also like told from a, it's retro a retro future, future. which it's I retro guess that's what I'm thinking of. This is more of like a retro future feel. Maybe, but um, but it's all about distrust of the government, government conspiracies, and that sort if of thing. If you like listening to flat yeah. And it's it's also, it's a one shot. This is one and done. This is all there is. Yeah. Um, so, so it's inexpensive to get into. Again, it's evergreen. Like, you're going to see this forever. Um, so uh, there you go. That's what I recommend. Uh, v for Vendetta. All right, final picks. Yep. All right, now this one kind of breaks our one rule, I think. Um, because oh, about trying to put stuff that's in print? Put stuff in the print, because I don't believe this is in print. Yeah. This is Little Nemo, 
Um, and I don't think that it's easily available. I think you can find different versions and different things. The thing that makes this different from some of the versions that you will find um, is that this is everything, everything in one book. It's um, because Little well, Nemo. First of all, Little Nemo was a comic strip that ran in the newspapers. In the 1900, like early 1900s, which we're talking like 1901. 19, like, yeah. Well, the, funny, the front says 1905 to 1940. So, okay, 1905 yeah. to 1914. But. It ran for a really long time, and it started as Little Nemo in Summerland, and it ended as uh, In the Land of uh, Wonderful Dreams. So, don't um, watch the movie. Hmm? Don't watch the movie. Yeah, don't it. watch the movie. Um, so, the thing that makes this different than other collections is it does. If you can get your hands on it, it does have everything in it. Um, I will admit, though, that it is a little bit of a difficult read, and you'll be like, what? It's a Sunday strip. Why is it difficult to read? And I don't know that you can tell from looking at it. There's a lot of text. There's a lot of text. There's a lot of little imagery. Um, it's, is there a lot of old slang? There's old slang. There's the word balloons are written in the old way that word balloons are, where the words are coming right up to the edge of the balloons. There's not a lot of space. So it is a bit of a difficult read. So... Why do I recommend it? There's a lot of racism. There, there's a lot of racism. There's a lot of Mom, racism. Mom, you're a racist. I can't believe you. Get off my lawn. But the reason why I recommend it is mainly the art. The art is beautiful. And it my, it's probably hard to tell from how far away this is. Um, but it's that just piece. got the craziest little drawings and every little every drawing has like little tiny mm -hmm. details. So even if you don't read it, it is beautiful to look at. And I think if you're if you're someone who cares about uh, classics and reading up history. and knowing where things come from. The history of sequential art. Uh, and all this is Windsor McKay is pretty much credited with inventing modern animation mm -hmm. the way that we understand it today. Yeah, I, I'm not saying he did create it, so the um actually can just calm down. But just like, credited. but it, well, you it can, in terms of drawing things and flipping it in front of the camera, he pioneers. You that. can even go on YouTube and his original Birdie um, the dinosaur, Bir so. Birdie the dinosaur, some uh, Flip the clown. Mm -hmm. So to give you an idea of like, well, I've heard of Little Nemo in Summerland. I know it's a little boy who goes to sleep. What is it? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you have Nemo. Nemo goes to sleep. And in every story, he's gone to sleep, and at the end, he wakes up. So at the end of every page, he wakes up. So even though it's a continuing story each week, he's still waking up at the end of every one. So it's like a continuous dream. Sometimes. And so he's asleep, and a uh, representative comes to him and says, you are summoned by the, the dream king, right? So the first... There, there is an actually overarching story. The first part of the story is he's trying to get to Slumberland to meet the king. The king wants him to meet his daughter so that he can be a playmate to the princess. There's another little boy, which is a weird, weird little boy called Flip. And he smokes a big old cigar. And I'm talking, he's a little boy. It's not, it's not this idea of like, oh, it's actually a man and he smoked. No, it's a little kid smoking <laughs> this big old cigar. Because that was acceptable at the time. Like, little kids smoking cigars was not unheard of. So Why do you hate freedom? I don't know. You're taking away my rights! But anyways, in the beginning, Flip's whole deal was that he wanted to wake up Nemo, and that was part of the story. So he would always wake up Nemo so that he couldn't meet the princess. And like, Kind of disrespectful. Well, finally he meets the princess, and so he's traveling around with the princess, but st Flip's still causing problems, waking them up. But I guess Flip becomes popular and starts hanging out with the princess and Nemo, so then they introduce Imp. An Imp is super racist. Imp is super um, racist. Child. They go, okay, every time they go somewhere in these dreams, they are fantastical worlds based on worlds in the actual, on the actual planet. So, like, he goes to Africa. Oh, no. And Imp is a horrible, horrible representation of a black look, person. Look, look, you can't blame Windsor McKay, okay? He grew up in Canada. He couldn't, like, just hop on his dinosaur and travel to Africa for references. <laughs> he had to go by what the imperialists told him about 
the natives in Africa. Now, can you blame them even, for being a little racist? Even though Imp is a very racist representation of a black person, I do also kind of like his character because he is just messing with them repeatedly. Like he becomes the one that's kind of waking them up or causing problems or doing little weird things. I don't know. I think it's cute. It, he just took Flip's place, which I don't know. And then Sus. as the story goes on, apparently people didn't like the princess. So it's just the three of them chilling, hanging out, going to different adventures and these kinds of things. They go to like an Asian type world. Like it's just different travels. It's, it's all Windsor McKay's like just imagination of what he thinks the world is like and dreams are like and all that kind of stuff. So what, what, what manga is it similar to? Oh, that's a difficult one. Anyone with a lot of detail, honestly. So if you think of like Rose of Versailles and all of the amazing detail in that, because like really what I'm thinking about is more than the story, you're really looking at this for the art and the, the beauty and the detail that he creates in, in it. So even like say Akira and his building and the building designs in Akira, like there is a lot of detail design in Akira for that some reason, you can just look at the panels for a long like time. The cover, I, I don't know why, but the main guy, Nemo, he, he makes me uh, think of Astro Boy for some reason. Well, here's another it's weird thing. You, is you never see that. him up close. He's always like super tiny. You never see up close of anybody's faces. I was actually going to say, if you're into Osamu Tezuka, maybe try this. Because yeah. chances are, if you're into Tezuka, it's because you wanted to learn about the classics. And so I think that... It's similar yeah. value that you're getting out of yeah. it. Yeah. So. Well, Rose of Versailles is also a classic. Sure. So. Yeah, but I feel like less people know about Rose of he's, Versailles. He's not, he's not, Rose of Versailles is not Tezuka classic. It is not. It, it, literally, the only it thing that's known for is for inspiring It influenced all, almost all shoujo manga. But, yeah, you know. but did it uh, influence all of shonen? Because shonen is clearly better. No, shonen is just more popular in the West. Anyway. I just have to get a little casual misogyny in there. What? Along what? with the casual racism, we're going to get some No, you're the misogyny. one doing the casual well, racism. I'm not time. doing it. It's in the book. You're over here showing swastikas on your... Yeah, comics. you're going to get us banned in Tennessee. <laughs> anyway, I just noticed my mic cord was hanging out the whole time. So that's Don't great. Don't say it that way. Anyway. Uh, okay, so for my final recommendation... Black. This had to be on there. I, yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Would people who read B stars like this? Yes. <laughs> if you like B, pretty much if you like B stars, you should be reading this. Also, if you like things which is gorgeous art and mystery, you should be. If you like this. mystery noir, mystery noir. So even if you like No Guns Life or something like that, you should read this. So I like how we jump straight to the record. The people who should read this. <laughs> well, because I looked so, at it, I'm like B stars, B stars. That's true. Yeah. So. Okay, let's back up. Black Sad is a French comic done by Spanish writer and artist uh, combo that has been licensed in the U.S. Uh, by Dark Horse. This particular one is a Spanish edition that a friend got me. And I'm just using this because, A, I think the cover is more photogenic. And uh, it's bigger, so it makes a bigger on-camera prop. But this is not the one that you will see. In the U.S. And maybe I can have daughter run to the shelf and grab it here in a minute if we need it. Um, or actually, on the back, it kind of shows what... I mean, I can go grab it. Yeah. Anyway. So, Black Sad is a series of shorts. If you buy it in America, there's like three uh, graphic novels with a fourth one coming out this month. And I'm so happy about it that I learned that by researching it for this video and seeing that it came out. Even though mom Even though claims, ignoring that I told him mom about it. claims that she told me about it a few months ago, but she needs to bring the receipts. Anyway, uh, this is this is a series of short stories with our main character, the Catman, named uh, John Blacksad. So Blacksad is his last name. He's a private investigator, and it's just him doing odd jobs and the stuff that goes along with it, right? Like the adventures that, uh, that happen with it. Um, it's just a detective, but he's a cat. Yeah. So the first story, which is called somewhere in the shadows, I believe, um, uh, it's a very cut and dry noir story where it's, uh, a girl that he used to date got murdered and he's trying to solve the murder. 
and there may or may not be city government corruption involved in it. The second story, which is this one is a part of, is called Arctic Nation. And this is where they re- this is where it really ties into B Stars, where the authors are using the physical traits of the animals to tell a story. So it takes place, or what he's trying to do is he's trying to find a, a kidnapped girl, is the case that he's trying to solve. And he takes him to this town where all the animals with white fur are dominating and subjugating all the uh, animals with brown or black fur. And um, at one point, Black Sad is cheeky because he's like, oh, I have white fur. Does this count? Yeah. He's a tuxedo <laughs> cat. Yeah. So he tries to play coy <laughs> and all that. Tuxedo um, And then there's another one that takes place in New Orleans. I believe that one is called... Yeah, so... French publisher, Spanish writers, where the characters oh, are all set, set in the U.S. All set in America. Like, I think the first one is in New York. I think this is in New York, but is in upstate or something like that. Then there's one that takes place in New Orleans during Mardi Gras. There's one that takes place in Texas called Amarillo. Yeah. Uh, then there's one called Red Sun or something like that that takes place in New York. Yeah, it all takes place in the U.S., for sure. And I'm pretty sure that the new one takes place in San Francisco. I was say, I thought some of it took place in California. But... Yeah. Which I learned, side note, you know how there's a town in our state, Indiana, called Versailles? Versailles? That, that should be called Versailles. Mm-hmm. I learned that Texans are pronouncing Amarillo wrong. That it should be Amarillo for uh, yellow. Like, it literally means yellow. Mm. I learned that. I learned the, some Spanish. The yellow, uh, wasn't it a yellow convertible on that one? Yeah, it was a yellow convertible yeah. on it. Yeah. That's so, kind of cheeky. So anyway, let me get back to why you need to read this. Like, yeah. you don't read this for the story. The stories are perfectly serviceable. I think Arctic Nation is the best one, personally. Uh, but what you really, the real reason why you get this for the is the art. Like... Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is probably an okay one. So, like, just look at this. I know, like, hopefully people can expand, zoom in, or at least Google it. But, like, this is all hand done. Also, there is a video game for Black Side. I don't necessarily recommend that because I've heard that it was not good. Yeah, that is also what I've heard. But, um, the art is gorgeous. It's all hand done with watercolors. It's, it's not digital. Um, it's just a feast for the eye. It truly is. The... Highly detailed backgrounds on the level of Katsuhiro Tomo. Um, I can't say enough good things about this. Like, I this is definitely a top five comic for me. I don't know if it's number one, but it's in the top three. And just, I don't know, it's just the total package. And I, I think any manga reader would totally love, love this, especially if they love B-Stars or anything uh, along those lines. So, boom. All right. What are you guys' closing remarks then? Um, I don't know. That's a good question. <laughs> that's what you recommend. Well, yeah. These are the, the things that we recommend. I hope that you'll try at least one of them because I think there's you know a lot of good stuff out there. We are just fans of sequential art. We tend to be really preferring manga right now, but you know we've been fans. Well, we're, we're definitely we're old in... sequential fans from way back. <laughs> well, we're definitely also into. Th- Things that we would consider classics of Mm -hmm. sequential art genre. genre. Mm -hmm. So in our list here, I mean, I wouldn't count Gem or Fables or even Blue Monday, but Little Little Nemo, Blankets, Mouse. Well, I I didn't present it here because I I don't know that I'd recommend it, but I really enjoy Corto Maltese, which is another French uh, classic, you know, Mm -hmm. so... Um, but yeah, those are our American recommendations. Hopefully you'll enjoy them. But, uh, real quick, let's transition to talk about the channel lineup. So, uh, in two weeks we got to drop another video, but, uh, with the 4th of July weekend and, you know, normal life stress, we forgot to pick out a topic. <laughs> we don't have a... So we, we didn't really plan out this one very well. We'll pick out one soon, though. We will pick out one soon. So the next video will kind of be a mystery. Uh, sorry a about mystery. that. But the mystery one, box. the one after that, if everything goes well, will be the Tokyo Revengers uh, review that's supposed to drop on the twenty sixth, if I believe. 
something like that. So yeah, so and it might depend on whether we can get our hands on it. Well, the our next this video should drop on July fifth. The next one should be the nineteenth, which is obviously too soon for Tokyo Revengers. Um, so it'll be the first one in August. Will be Tokyo Revengers, and then probably the second we the second release in August will be our twenty twenty two updated mega manga tour mega manga collection tour uh unless we decide to do that one next time but i don't think that we will probably, probably not because i'd be too know. early yep so anyway wait, wait wait once you're done can i close out the video um sure i don't know i was getting ready to close it out well wait i want to close it out okay because i have something to tell you the the only the only thing is if you like this video invite the like button over for anime and when you start it all of a sudden switch it from subs to dubs okay well no i i have something to close it out though because okay. you know how you liked uh, all that holographic stuff on the gem cover mm -hmm. yeah did you know that originally for sonic 2 they were going to print it with holographic labels no no well now you know no. it's like how you didn't know that sonic 3 came on two cartridges now you know that originally sonic 2 is going to come with holographic labels okay you boom you got me Ugh, got him. Fucking got him. <laughs>